Hi guys, I'm Scott Mantle and welcome to the Driver 61 guide to how to drift a road car. Now there's no doubt about it, drifting looks cool. Long sideways slides and apart from the tyre bill, what's not to love? However, most of the videos I've seen on the internet have shown how to drift in a purpose-built drift car or a high-powered road car. Well, in this video, I'm going to explain exactly how I drifted a standard 2-litre, 200 brake horsepower Toyota 86. Let me start by saying you should never drift on the public road. Be sensible with this. The best thing to do is to hire an area of tarmac, which you can do at many race circuits or airfields, lay out some cones and begin to drift around these. Whilst drifting is fun, it's also quite difficult and you're going to make a few mistakes at the beginning. A road car is more difficult to drift than a purpose-built drift machine which has tons of power, a custom made diff and an e-brake. Road cars are softer, less powerful and more likely to understeer than drift cars. Therefore you need to be really aggressive with your throttle and steering inputs, the opposite to my normal track driving advice. To be able to drift in a road car you'll need rear wheel drive, a bit of power, a manual box and the ability to completely disable traction and stability control. There are four stages of drifting. Starting the drift, where you need to unsettle the rear of the car. Maintaining the drift, where you keep that massive slide going. Transitioning the drift, where you go from sliding one way to the other. And exiting the drift, where you gently bring the car back into a straight line. Here you can see me drifting the GT86 around the Yas Marina circuit. Look out for the four stages of the drift. Here we have the start of the drift, notice the aggression with the steering wheel. The maintenance, with lots of acceleration. Then a lift and into the transition, back to maintenance again, a lift, back into the maintenance, and finally exiting that drift. So it all happens quite quickly and we're just gonna watch one more example. Flick in to start the drift, maintenance here, transition very quickly into maintenance again, a lot of throttle through this section. Again, another transition, and this is a hairpin, so the drift is continuing and maintaining for a long time until we finally come out of the corner and we exit the drift. Starting the drift is relatively easy, but because the GT86 doesn't have so much power, we're going to have to use more than just the throttle to get the drift going. Approach the corner with some speed, brake to transfer some weight to the front and away from the rear, and flick the car into the corner. So what's weight transfer, I hear you ask? Well, in this case, when we brake, the front of the car will come down, and the rear of the car will come up slightly. When the front of the car comes down, it means that more of the car's mass is over the front axle, and again, less is over the rear. When you have more weight over one particular area of the car, it therefore has more grip. So in this case, we get on the brakes and more of the weight goes to the front of the car. Therefore, the front has more weight and more grip. The rear has less weight and less grip, which means that the rear is lively, which is exactly what we want for drifting. So let's have a look at things in a little bit more detail in slow motion in the GT86. We're approaching the corner here, I'm getting on the brakes, so more of the weight has moved to the front of the car than the rear, therefore the front has lots of grip and the rear is nice and lively, which is just what we want. We approach the corner and I flick the car quite hard with the steering here to disrupt and unsettle the rear of the car to try and make it rotate. We're coming in now, I'll be coming off the brakes about now and we should begin to feel the car to rotate around. You can see my steering lock is coming off and we are going to transfer to put some opposite lock into the car. The car didn't rotate fully into a drift initially so you can see that I turned the car back into the corner again before adding more opposite lock as you can see here and now the car settled and has full drifting angle. If you're too soft with your inputs at this point, the car will understeer. If you're too rough, if you brake too much or flick the car in too hard, then the rear will come around too quick and you'll probably spin. So it'll take you a few attempts to get it right, but just try to be conscious of what's going on around you and if you spin or if you understeer, next time either be less aggressive or be more aggressive to try and get the car unsettled and into the drift as well as possible. Maintaining the slide is a really fun part. It's so satisfying to have the car fully sideways where it's really sensitive yet quite stable. You put the throttle down some more and you get more angle. 
you lift off a little bit and the car straightens itself up. The common mistake here is to use too little throttle. It's really surprising how much you actually need. So when you're practicing, think about your throttle input and don't be scared to use too much. And when you're maintaining the drift, it's really a balancing act between the steering and the accelerator pedal. As you can see here, I'm putting more lock into it and then adding some opposite lock as the car rotates. And you've really got to feel what's happening. If the car's beginning to straighten up, you can tweak the steering, turn the car in a little bit more and give it some more throttle and you'll get some more angle. If you have too much angle, you can just ease up off the accelerator a slight bit or release some steering angle and the drift will maintain. Once you've got the car into the drift and settled, maintaining the drift isn't actually that difficult. But what you'll have to do is refine your steering and throttle inputs until you get the perfection and the feel so you can keep those long drifts going. Transition is the most tricky part. The part where you go from drifting one way to the other. There's a lot going on and it all happens quite quickly. Also, the window where the drift has the right amount of force is quite small. This part will take a lot of practice. Transition too hard and the car will spin, too soft and it will push to understeer. When you're practicing, just try to be aware of the mistakes you make, so on your next attempt, you can try to correct them. So the trick when transitioning is to almost over-rotate the car to a point where you can only just bring it back. So looking at the detailed footage here, you can see that I just bring in a bit more angle here before I'll lift off the accelerator so the rear tires will grip up slightly and throw the car into the opposite direction. So as you can see here, I've lifted, turned the car into the right, and now the car's transitioning. You can see all of the weight transfer and the car leaning over to the left. I've let go of the steering wheel so it's spinning around. And at this point, we just have to try to catch the steering wheel so that we're at the right steering angle for the drift and get back on the accelerator very hard so that we can go back into maintenance mode and keep the drift going. So you can see here now I've collected everything up and we're back into a right hand drift. Now this section, as I've mentioned, is quite difficult. It's difficult to get the transition perfect, but with practice you'll get there. Um, letting go of the steering wheel is also quite a difficult thing to get used to, uh, but you have to do it in this case in a transition because the steering wheel spins around so quickly. If the circuit's right, you can go from drift to transition to drift to transition until you run out of tyres. But what's more likely is that you'll want to exit the drift at some point. Much like the transition, this is the tricky part. The car's fully loaded up and you'll need to release that load smoothly. So basically, in this fairly low-powered GT86, to exit the slide, you just allow the slide to run out. This happens as you open out the line and the steering. The car doesn't have enough grunt to maintain a lot of angle. So if we just fast forward the video here, we have one more transition in this section, which I won't go over. We get the car into maintenance, and here you can see I'll be accelerating really hard. In the video, you'll notice that I'm uh, almost on the limiter of the GT86. And the point at where the car starts to grip back up again is here and we are taking the lock out of the car, bringing it into more of a straight line as we exit the slide. Now the trick is just to get the steering input or releasing the steering angle at the correct time as the grunt of the car runs out and it naturally wants to grip up and go back in a straight line again. So let's watch all of that again so you can get a feel for the drifting. Now you understand the detail. So we're approaching this left-hander. We're getting on the brakes about now, flicking the car in, back on the gas, maintaining the slide, maintaining the slide, and lift off the accelerator, let the car flick the other way, get the angle off it, back on the gas, and again another transition. Then we gently bring the steering back in a straight line as we exit the drift. So once again, on the brakes, flick the car in, back on the throttle to maintain the drift, and we lift, allow the car to drift in the opposite direction, get back on the throttle, keep the drift going, so we lift, let the car flick in the opposite direction, pick the accelerator up again. We're looking towards the exit point here. And as the grip naturally comes back in, we straighten the steering up. So that's the Driver 61 guide to how to drift a road car. Please enjoy and remember not to practice on the public road. For the full article and to download the free top tips ebook, please visit the Driver 61 website in the upcoming link. 
If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to our channel.